Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my backyard. Today is October 27th and this is my weekly shop update. So this weekend I got a call from my friend Jim. You'll remember him from the Day in the Woods video. He had a couple of logs that he wanted to bring to me because he felt that now that I am pretty much done with the patio, I wasn't going to have anything to do. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he was kind enough to pull a couple logs out of the woods and bring them here for me. Now this log over here was actually out in the woods for many, many years. You can actually see that it's in pretty rough shape. All of the sapwood on it has actually rotted away. This log is white oak and it kind of gives you an idea of the rot resilience, uh, the, the rot resistance of white oak as a, as a wood. The sapwood, which pretty much in all kinds of woods, the sapwood will rot first, but the heartwood is still extremely solid and still perfect like it was cut yesterday. So that's gonna make a lot of great lumber. So over the next few weeks, I'll be milling these, both these logs are both white oak with my chainsaw mill. Uh, and the purpose for these logs, or at least the end goal for these logs, are for some patio furniture for the patio. I'm planning on making a large dining table up for out there and maybe some benches and things to go around. So these white oak logs will be perfect for those. The, this log here is 24 inches in diameter and 12 feet long. And this one's a little smaller, it's maybe 10 or 9 feet long and maybe about 18 inches in diameter. Now this, this log over here has somewhat of a backstory. It has been out in the woods uh, at that farm for many years now. So a few years ago, Jim actually got interested in making lumber. So he actually built his own swing blade sawmill. And he actually cut all of the lumber for his trailer, the trailer decking from this log. The problem with this log and the reason the log was out there for so long is we could not get it out of the woods no matter how hard we tried or no matter what method we tried. It seemed like it was always too heavy for the bobcat and it just wouldn't move. So it just kind of sat out there. I guess this weekend Jim found himself with some free time and was playing around out there with the bobcat and he managed to pull the log out of the woods. How he managed to do that, I don't really know. He also managed to get it onto the trailer with the bobcat. So. Again, I'm not really sure how he managed to do that, but he did. So you might be asking yourself, well, if it got on the trailer and now it's here on the ground, well, I know Matt, you don't have any heavy equipment around here to just pull stuff off trailers. So how do you get a log that weighs over a ton off of a trailer? <laughs> well, the answer has something to do with that strap and that tree back there. You actually hook up the log to a tree and you drive off. <laughs> That's exactly how we got these logs off the trailer. So last night I actually gave this log a quick cut. I cut off the end just to see how it was looking on the inside because from the outside it looks pretty junky. You can't really tell how it looks. And I wanted to trim it off just to see, well for two reasons really, to see how it looked as far as checking goes, to see if there was a lot of checking. If there was a lot of checking on the log, I wouldn't really want to mill that. I would probably cut it back and get rid of the checking before I actually milled it into lumber. And then the other reason was just to clean it up because there's a lot of dirt and stuff in the end of the log that I didn't want to have uh, my chainsaw running through. So that's what's happening out here. On the way in, I'll show you an update on the patio. I got most of that finished up and then I'll show you a few things in the shop. So coming around here. The big thing this week was the capstones. I had my neighbor come by and help me move and install this cap here which is eight foot three inches long. That cap up there, which is nine foot five inches long. And the biggest one of them all is this cap here, which is 11 feet long. And that one is 350 pounds. <laughs> so this week was our anniversary and it was great because we got to spend the evening out here in front of the fire for the first time. And we've actually spent a few days out here as well. I finally moved my green and green and Rondack chairs from the Wood Whisperer Guild build uh, out here. They've been in my living room for a few months now, I guess all since earlier this year. One of my first shop updates was actually me putting these chairs together. So that was back in January, I think. So those have been waiting to come outside for quite a long time. So this week I got back in the shop a little bit. I did spend some time out here just kind of cleaning up, getting a little organized, and making the space a little more inviting to be out here. So besides the fact that I actually cleaned, I vacuumed, and I put some, some things away, I gave some thought to some storage ideas. Uh, one of the things that I've been working on for a few weeks on and off, I made a little cabinet to go behind my jointer just to hold some random stuff. Uh, and with that, I'm thinking that now that I have all this extra melamine from my forms for all those caps, 
I'm gonna continue to make some more cabinets and shelving to go along that wall behind my jointer and then across my table saw area. It's just hard when you just have stuff lying all over the place, you don't really have anywhere to put it all. Uh, it's nice to have a nice clean open area when you have things lying around because while well, there's nowhere else to put it, you're just really shuffling things around. One, one moment is over here on this table, then oh, I gotta clear that off, and then I shove it all over here so that I can work over there and then move back and forth. It never really has a home. It's just my, all my Nomad stuff, it needs a home. So I'm gonna continue making some cabinets over there out of all that scrap. And I think that will really clean up and organize things. Um, looking forward into the future, a few things I wanna do around the shop. This um, bench behind me, I like to get rid of that and replace that with cabinets. I think that would be a lot better suited for the space, give me a lot more storage. And the other thing I like to do is build a miter saw station for a miter saw. This is my largest Nomad tool at this point, and it really needs a new home. One thing that was really interesting, or a lot of fun as far as cleaning goes this week, is I actually took the time to uh, shovel up, literally shovel up all the shavings from around my lathe. I had a layer that was about six inches thick of compressed shavings for me walking on it. That was actually my little anti-fatigue mat and my little height riser. Because I'm a little on the short side, it's nice to be able to get a little bit more height on the lathe and be a little more comfortable. So that's gone now. I dug that all out and mulched all the flower beds or some of the flower beds with that. I was able to get four wheelbarrow loads of shavings out of here just from that one little area. So that's all gone now. <laughs> so this week I'm gonna have a video out about the building of that little cabinet over there, the wall cabinet. It's not really all that complex of a build. It's not really anything you probably haven't seen before, but it's the materials that I think has a story to tell. That cabinet is made out of the, what, the second thing I ever made. So a little recycling project, which I think will be pretty fun to, to share with you all. So that's all I have for this week. Thanks as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about anything I talked about today or anything here in my shop or in my yard or anything like that, please leave me a comment. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, happy woodworking.